This video is sponsored by Fix the Photo. Stay tuned until the end of the video to find out more. Hello there Mendos, I'm Mandalorian Business and welcome back to the second episode from the Texturing Star Wars series. Today we're going to dive into one of the most beloved factions in the Star Wars universe, the Mandalorians. With the last Clone Wars season at an end, I decided to go and recreate Bo-Katan, member and leader of the Night Owls and the true Mandalorians. Today's episode is going to be significantly shorter and much more interactive, which means that I will be giving explanations of the process I've been going through when doing the texturing work. Before we start, I would like to thank you all for the first milestone ever on this channel. A few weeks ago we reached 1000 subscribers. I can't thank you all enough for the support you have shown so far. It means a lot for me and I'm glad I can bring something that you all enjoy. Now. Let's proceed with the video. As always, I am starting with the helmet. First things first, I had to decide over the material I was going to use. Since in the animation you can't tell the difference too well between certain materials, I have taken the Mandalorians from the Mandalorian TV show as references and gave Bo-Katan a more matte look. To make the work process a little easier, I like to add a fill layer for the material and then use the eraser tool to give a form for the eventual markings. As you can see in the process, sometimes I have to go back and fix the 3D model in a few places in order for the texture to be well applied on the mesh. Every time I am making a modification for the 3D model in Blender, I have to re-export and re-import it in the texturing program. For anyone who is interested in the name of the material I used, it is called Steel Rust and Wear. From there on you can play with the resolution and the properties of the material as you wish. To make sure that I give the overall helmet the best car, metallic aspect, I use a separate layer on top of all the others and intensify the metallic channel with a few points. Not too high, not too low. For the visor, my recommendation is to use a much shinier material or it can be just a fill layer with the roughness property turned off for some nice reflection effects. As we move on, let's talk about the weathering effect. For this part, I took some inspiration from the animated TV show. The different nuances of blue combine with each other to give the helmet a more dynamic, weathered look. To make that possible, I reused the original fill layer with the material and duplicated it, changing the color afterwards. I did for the weathering part. Use different brushes or you can just use the same one and adjust and play around with the opacity to give the overall texture a worn vibe. As we finish with the helmet section, let's move on to the body armor texturing. For the body armor, I used the same materials I used for the helmet, but this time with a more accentuated metallic look on the chest part, blaster, holsters and ankles. A part of the weathering effect is given by the default material I am using. You can adjust the weathering settings from the material properties tab. For the bodysuit, I took some inspiration from Django Fett's gear and decided to use the cotton material. I adjusted the color and all of the other settings to fit the model. After the metallic material got set up properly on the armor pieces, I added a new layer of paint over the metallic material. However, this time I decided to hand paint over to give the parts a weathered look from the start. I turned up the roughness a little more on the paint so it's not reflecting. For the boots I used two materials. The first one is artificial leather and the second one is a smart material called rubber boots. Now let's move to the final part of the texturing process. In the end I decided to adjust the weathered look of the model by using another material called peeled paint metal. It has given the armor a good look as it is harnessing the weathering effect and uh, you can also change it according to your likeness. Be careful as it might take a lot from your memory RAM to process the changes with this material. Now that we are done with the texturing process, let's take a look onto the sponsor of the video. Fix the Photo is focusing on making your editing game much easier and taking your work to a professional level. You can step up your editing process by accessing a wide variety of add-ons and presets specifically made for Adobe programs, such as Photoshop, Lightroom and Premiere Pro. But the fun doesn't stop here. 
With the links in the description you get 30% off of your purchase. I will leave multiple links to different products so you can choose the one you would like to get. There is also a free product section of the store which will be also linked below. You just have to click on the link and get the discounts you deserve. Here at the end of the video, I want to thank you all for the support and for watching the new videos I have posted for the past few months. Currently I have an open GoFundMe page for everyone who would like to help me get the new PC. This PC would help me get better content and much faster for you all to enjoy. Please do not feel compelled to help. This is only an optional support method. Only the thought that you have watched this video made my day. I will leave a link in the description below. Thank you again for watching and may the force be with you always.